So it's, it's a good question, and, and I don't know uh, if I'll be able to convince you about is the money well spent is the, is the juice, you know, is the, the juice worth the squeeze. Uh, I, I certainly feel it is, uh, but obviously I'm not an impartial uh, observer or arbitrator of this. Uh, you know, I think I've always asked people ask us, what is your value? And, and I can get up here and I can talk about the things I've talked about and I can show examples. I think that that question is better ask the people that we partner with and that we try to serve on a daily basis, the law enforcement agencies that utilize us, the public and private sector entities that we may partner with, and say if the MIAC went away tomorrow, what kind of hole would that create and would you be able to fill it from a statewide perspective? Do you have the resources? Do you have the capacity? Do you have those established, that established infrastructure and relationships in place with those entities? Uh, but by my count, there's probably, and I may, this is a bit of a guess, there's only about seven or eight other criminal intelligence analysts that support local agencies, uh, you know, like a, a Portland or maybe a Scarborough or a Lewiston. And I'm sure they have all they do can handle it for those agencies. Most agencies in Maine, uh, as I'm sure you all know, representative, are, are made up of 10 people or less. You know, your smaller police departments, you certainly have your larger ones like us, but they have a hard enough time maybe trying to fill a, an overnight shift with a, a part-time patrol officer, let alone have someone that can bring those that capabilities or that, that expertise uh, to kind of assist them where they lack those resources. Um, so it's, it's I, I always think that's a better question for the people that, that we serve. I think that from a statewide perspective and with the established relationships we have with our federal partners, I think that you know there isn't anyone that can do what we, we can do. Uh, but don't take my word for it. I, I would engage with other law enforcement agencies and say, please tell us about the MIAC. How has it helped you? I, I'm not gonna sit here and say they're all gonna give a ringing endorsement of the MIAC, but I, I think we work really hard to making sure that we, we liaison with our, our, our state uh, partners and our local partners and our, our public and private sector partners, try to be responsive to what their needs are. And I think given the, the nature of law enforcement and how resource strapped they already are, I think it would be very difficult to provide that statewide perspective in terms of sharing information, situational awareness, and that kind of technical expertise and that research and, uh, and analysis and intelligence component that we provide. Um, so it's, it's uh, but, but, it, but that's a question better left for, for some of the, the police departments. I, I think it would be, you, there's no other agency that would step up and fill the gap. I might be wrong on that. Um, so I certainly would never say $800,000 spent on anything is a bargain, but when I look at what that capability provides for other agencies that but for us would not be able to provide that for themselves, then I, I, I think that's, that's certainly money well spent. And there may be occasions where information is double or triple chair. Um, that certainly happens. Where, like, if you want to wait tomorrow, would, would that information otherwise get through? I think there are many situations it would not. Some that it would. And I always say I would rather be kind of double or triple tapped on a piece of information than to not than to not hear about it at all. And that's going to happen sometimes where you have different agencies working and you'll hear about something that's happening from two or three different people. I'd rather see that oversharing. Um, that that doesn't happen a lot. Um, and I think we provide that statewide kind of strategic analysis. And strategic analysis is kind of like flying over the state of Maine in a plane and trying to identify those threat areas and those threat priorities. And you know what's, what's happening in different parts of the state, what are the unique threat? And that sort of strategic analysis, I think is very important. It's, it's what we help provide. Um, and, and you also have the tactical piece, which is that specific case support. I am working a robbery, I am working a homicide, I am working a burglary, I have these suspects. Can you please try to help me with uh, uh, um, getting information from, from either other state agencies or other federal agencies to try to inform my case and my investigation? That's more kind of the tactical piece. Uh, but but and, and I that may not answer your question, ma'am, but I, it's a good question. You know, and without kind of digging in, I know we've released our budget. Um, you know, that most of that is people. You know, people I think are the most valuable and expensive asset the state has. They're certainly the most valuable. But I think what that budget represents a lot of it is people. Me sergeant, the analyst, if they were here, those, that's what that money goes to. Um, we don't have these hugely expensive, you know, uh, software programs and technology, uh, as I've kind of indicated, technology is a part of it, and certainly, you know, rent's a part of it, but a lot of it is people. That's what that money goes to. And, and those people that show up there that, that, that don't work for the state police, we don't pay their salaries. They're, they're here out of a strong willingness to partner with us. They, those, the, the FBI, the DHS, the HIDA, the, the county sheriff's departments, they, they're paying their own salaries. This is not like an MDA model where they're where, with DPS maybe reimbursing or they're here out of the, the, because they feel it's the right thing.